In this video, we're going to be building a ZOHD Drift with a Speedy B F405 Wing Mini that's just been released, running a Walk Snail Avatar HD camera, GPS, and all other goodies required for some medium range flying running iNav. Stay tuned for this build. Hope you enjoyed, guys. So I bought this from AliExpress. This was going cheap actually for 90, 90 Australian dollars and that include only $10 ship, shipping. So no, actually it was free shipping this one. So yeah, I thought I could resist it. And it's a PNP version that I've got here. Now we've got a fuselage here and tail wing wrapped up. I won't do that in a second. Wow, it's a small motor. Some screws, we've got like a little must be a spar, a very small spar, and a bit of Velcro in here. We've got our little elevator in here. I'll, I'll take these out in a second. And we should have two wings. Yeah, we've got our two wings in here. So this is the PMP version. It's already got, got its servos in it. But the wing itself is fairly solid, but it's, um, it's got spar on both sides. It does have the quick connect system as well, you can see there. Like I said, this is just going to be for a, a quick plane I can bring camping and take away with me. It's not going to take up a great deal of room and it's going to be good for a bit of HD, hopefully, and a bit of semi long range. A little elevator. It is a small motor. Look at that. That's tiny. It's a little. 2600 kV 1406 motor. So yeah, you've got your quick connects on each side here for your, for your wing. Looks like you've got a little hatch here you can pull off, which is a good spot for the wing mini. That should sit in there pretty good. Well, it's going to be hard even with a wing mini in this. You certainly wouldn't fit the other board in anything bigger but that's basically it there. It's going to take up quite a bit of room. On top of that, you've got your, your header pins too. What I might have to do is turn it up the other way in this board. It's, it is tight still, but looks like it'll fit in. There's another little compartment down here for the ESC fitting in here. And your servo connections here for your for your elevator by the look. Yeah, that's for your elevator. Okay, so GPS will fit openly up the top here. There's a dedicated spot for that. Flight controller underneath. Battery cable going into the battery bay here with the FPV camera. VTX is gonna be the problem possibly, where to fit that, but I'm sure we'll work something out. Whether it, whether it ends up top here, I don't know. Anyway, it's going to be some thinking to do. All right, so it's a little carbon fiber boom, a little tail piece. Elevator just sliding in like that. You should have a screw, which will go into here. Control horn. So there's only one spot this can go. That'll fit in there, just like that. Oh, uh, yeah, screws in. So that just locks in, and then your tail is solid in the back there. The spell will just go in like that. Okay. And that does the same thing. The wings clip together and are held together by a screw in the top here. It's a 30 amp ESC, <clears throat> branded ZOHD, it's our own brand. I'm not sure about the servos, whether they're digital or analog, plastic or metal geared, I'm not too sure. That's your basic setup just there, it's pretty simple. Okay, so I've got the flight controller soldered up, I've got my battery cables on there and my ESC cable. I've mounted my capacitor on top of the flight controller like that. So my GPS is gonna go in the top here, there's a little spot, I still wanna try and keep it like that. I'm not sure what sort of battery is gonna fit in there, but it's pretty small and pretty tight. Um, and over the other side here, we've got this other bay here. Now this is where I've decided, I think, 
I'm going to run the flight controller right next to the ESC and the ele elevator servo. Um, the problem is if I put it in here, which is where I think it's meant to go, I can't shut it. I can't, I can't, the capacitor being there is too high and then my pins. So I'm thinking the way I should have probably done it to have the flight controller set up in here is with the, the right angle pins that came with it set up, put in like that and the flight controller swung around this way maybe. But even so, it's still gonna be hard feeding everything down in here. And with the capacitor up here, uh, there's no room. If we can put the flight controller in the bottom here, now the plan will be to spin it round, so it's gonna be upside down like that, but facing the front. So the arrows are still going to be facing the, the front of the craft. And if we, if we feed our wires through, so it's going to go in somewhere like this. The only thing I've got to watch is this servo horn here. I don't want to be uh, getting in the way of that. So that's going to be another challenge. The ESC is going to squeeze in like this. Wow. Now, the flight controller needs to move forward a bit more just to make this work. So something like this is how it's going to be set up. You'll have VTX sitting in here and receiver and battery going in the front here and obviously the wiring snug along the side for the camera. It's tight, real tight, but it's doable. This is the GPS I'm going to use. It's the Bishin BN220. And we've also got an Express LRS. This is a Happy Model ES900 receiver. That too I also have in quite a few other planes. So I thought might as well get that again. It's good enough. It's worked. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hook up our GPS and uh, do some wiring and have that ready to be plugged straight into the F405 Wing Mini. So a little GPS hatch, uh, it actually cutout is perfect for the BN220 GPS so there's no needing modification here the cabling goes straight in the little hole that's here uh, you can probably you can obviously fit a bigger GPS if you choose to so our GPS here hooks into the top port here on our middle board I'm going to use the six pin cable that came with the wing mini but I'm not going to use these two here, the blue and the green, uh, for your compass. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm going to take them out and just use the red, black, white, and yellow. It's a pretty simple direct plug and play. All I've got to do is try and get my length right because I don't want excess wiring. There's not a lot of room in the in the drift as it is. So minimal wiring will be key for this build. All right. So what we'll do is we'll just connect this up. Uh, the beauty of the uh, Speedy BF405 wing having Wi-Fi is that you can set do all your setup out of the plane quite easy with the Speedy B app. So what we'll do is plug this up. We should have a blue light, we do. Our GPS is hooked up. Now I'm gonna connect up to the app and just see if we're gaining any, just to, just to clarify that this is connected the right way. My RX is going to the TX and my TX is going to the RX on the GPS. We're on the SpeedyB app here. Sorry that it's only a it's a poor video for this, but I've got the SpeedyB F405 wing already connected here, so we'll cancel. We'll, we'll connect into that. Um, I want to enter ex expert mode here. Let's have a look here. Our GPS is red for some reason, so maybe the RX and the TX needs to be swapped around on the plug. That's very possible. Just go into the GPS tab here and let's have a look. It should be counting and it doesn't look like it is so it must be around the wrong way so what we'll do is we'll swap over our RX and our TX and give it another try all right so back in the SpeedyB app I've just swapped the RX and the TX around on one of the plugs and that's a lot better if you can see even up here um, we've got a bit of action going on with our GPS so 
if it doesn't work, that maybe what you have to do is you've have you've got to have your TX going to your RX and your RX going to your TX to have it working. Let's go back into expert mode here and we'll go into our GPS again. And we should see it counting. If we see it counting, we know it's correct. And you can see it counting right here. So we're all good. Our GPS is correct. Everything else is all good. Now that will get satellites um, once it's outside. And what we can do is select Galileo here and all these. And we'll save and reboot it. So if you come back and some of these have been deselected, all that means is your GPS doesn't handle these particular types of satellites. So yes, yeah, so it, it handles the Galileo. Let's try GLONASS. And there we go. GPS has Galileo and GLONASS. And total messages is picking up, so that means it's all good. We can disconnect and continue. Okay, so now that we know all that's correct, our GPS, I might just unplug that and we'll get on to doing the, the receiver now and set up the Express LRS. Right, happy model, Express LRS receiver. So let's wire this up and we'll set this one up next. So that's exactly how the wiring is going to go. That's how I'm, I will solder it up with your earth, your voltage, your TX, and then your RX um, on the other side. So you've got to just make sure you swap the TX and the RX so that your TX goes to the RX and your RX goes to the TX. We need to connect to our DuPont plug. Again, we'll just do exactly what we did with the GPS and just follow the, the cables. If it's incorrect with the RX and the TX, we will just swap it at the plugs. So our plug's gonna go into our F405 wing mini, just like this. I wanna try and get a rough idea of what length I'm going to need before I do the soldering, because I don't want excess, too much excess. I want a little bit of excess, but I don't want too much. That's just going to make the wiring very cluttered in there. So that's everything laid out. We've got the GPS, we've got our receiver over here connected up. I'm just going to put a battery onto it and fire everything up. All right, so receiver's working. We've got power going in there, so I'll be able to put the new firmware from the Express LRS configurator onto that. We've tested the GPS that's functioning. The flight controller's got INAV7 on it. Serial one is where the ESC is going to go into, and then we've got serial three and four for the ailerons and the elevator. Uh, the very first pin here is for S bus, so we don't go into that one. All right, so here we are over in INAV. I didn't bother showing you the setup of the firmware for the receiver. Anyone needs to know, I can happily answer that. What I need to do here is because my flight controller is upside down in the plane. I need to invert that. As you can see here, you can see the plane's upside down on the diagram. So we're gonna go into the alignment tool now and flip our flight controller 180 degrees. And then we'll hit save and reboot. So I just reset the axis. So if I bring the tail down, the tail goes down, the tail goes up and everything is moving in the right direction uh, to how I'm moving the flight controller and how it's mounted in the plane. Failure to do that would have resulted in a very bad crash on Maiden. So we'll just um, have a quick run through just to double check everything again. We've already done a few things here previously on this setup of the Speedy B wing. Have a look at each configurated tab here and just double check everything's set up correctly here. Scroll down here, um, there'll be modifications to be made in that once we, we set up. We do need to check the direction of our motor when we hook that up. Basically, once everything's in the craft, we'll do a final double check and a visual check of all the, all the moving surfaces and just make sure everything's right. Um, just to make sure I've got the basics set up, like return to home for our failsafe. 
can check out all our uh, movements in our receiver as well now that that's been installed and Express LRS has been set up with the latest firmware on it. And I've also done our modes too so we can double check all this with the transmitter just to make sure everything's active and as you can see by flicking switches and everything's set up now that I've got uh, on my transmitter. You can see our GPS still good, so we've got our GLONASS and Galileo satellites only and where total packages are increasing so that shows you the GPS will pick up satellites once it's outside. Also the icon up the very top there, you can see the GPS is blue not red so that means we're all good with our GPS. Uh, OSD setup I'm not going to bother with at this stage only because I have a HD walk snail system coming for this which I'm going to try and squeeze in the front somehow. This plane's going to be quite heavy on 2S I feel. Black box is also configured correctly so everything's set up pretty well here. We'll just disconnect now we don't need to do any more of this all I need to do is put a flight uh, is put a SD card in, in the flight controller. Anyway, everything's set up good. The plane's performing as it does in the picture here. We'll disconnect and move on. All right, so that's our bird's nest of wires here, all ready to be installed. So I've, I've gone over everything <coughs> on the flight controller here in iNav. The receiver has also got the latest firmware version of Express LRS on it. It's bound to my transmitter now too, so we're all good to go there. The only other thing is the video transmitter and camera when I get that. I'm thinking I'm going to be running a HD mini camera in this one. So what I've done, because it's going to be very awkward and I don't have it here at the moment, uh, I've just assembled a cable here all in readiness for it to just be hooked up. So I will leave this one just loose. It's got plenty of length on it so that when the HD camera does arrive, it's an easy connection because it's uh, once this is in the fuselage, it ain't coming back out again. It's, it's not going to be a lot of room, let's say, in there. So we're all good to go. We've got everything sorted out here. What I want to do is hook up the motor to the ESC and just confirm which way my props are spinning. We'll get the motor and prop running in the right direction and then we should be able to install everything in the fuse in ready for its maiden. I'm going to be running this on two cell battery so it's going to be running the the bigger prop. comes with two props. Uh, the other prop it comes with is a three bladed prop which is more suited for if you want to run this on three cell setup. I'm only running this on a two cell setup. So. All right let's connect up and we will just do a little uh, test here to so it's saying our, our GPS isn't hooked up. I've got it disconnected at the moment. And I've also got the receiver disconnected. So care must be taken when you do this now, guys, because with the prop on, we don't want uh, any injuries. I understand the risks propellers are removed and enable motor control. So this is where we've got to be careful because once we've connected this, we've got an active motor. We're connected up. I've taken the prop off because it's just safer. All I need to, to work out is the correct way the motor should be rotating is that it tightens this nut. You don't want your motor rotating at a high speed so that the nut can come off. So it needs to be rotating in the direction it tightens the nut. So in this case, we need, we need the motor be running this direction here. We enable, we enable this and we'll lift up the motor tab here just a bit gotta lift it up a fair way and that's running correct that's spinning this way so that's tightening this prop if it's spinning the wrong way all you have to do is just swap two of these wire motors over and you'll be right so we're all correct there, uh, that's all good. I've got my servos here. We've still got to test which servo goes in which way. I'm not too sure yet, but I've got them plugged in. Return to home, position hold, altitude hold, cruise. 
So what I had to change in, in the uh, mixer tab here uh, was the type of platform that we're running here. So we're running an airplane, but it's an airplane without a rudder. So you need to, for the Zod Drift, you need to select that airplane without rudder. So I've got my I've got my motor set to uh, signal one on the flight controller. My elevator is it signal three, and the ailerons are signal four and five. But we're not dealing with five. We're only dealing with four here because we only need it to go the one way. So basically, what you need to do is reverse one of your servos. If I move the transmitter, we got our elevator going down. Elevator going up here And if we bank it You can see they turn one goes up one goes down which is what you want and the other way one goes up one goes down So I just had to reverse one of these. I'm not hundred percent sure whether I've reversed the right one <clears throat> I'll be able to tell um, once everything's hooked up and if it isn't then it's just a matter of swapping it over there And it should be good Right, so the next stage here, I might just look at putting it all in and squeezing everything in here. Got to set up our servos. Just go back into our mixer tab here. Make sure everything's centered. So if I push right down for my eleva elevator, um, I'm down to a thousand. Thereabouts, full full pitch down, and full pitch up gives me nearly. 2000 it's around about 2000 1999 it can be might can be fine-tuned a bit higher and midpoint is 1500 so that, that that's pretty correct so i might look at hooking up all of our uh, rods to our control horns and put everything in the plane and see how we go so what we'll do next is adjust the throws um, in manual mode at the moment, will give you the most most amount of flex and everything there. Sitting as it is in neutral, it's pretty good. There's not much adjustment needed at all there, so that was good. What the recommended throw rates are for these for the sod drift it should be in the manual. See how far we should be going up. And down, so you don't want too much of that. We'll have a bit of fun in the air on the maiden. So you guys always set your your throw rates up in manual mode. Never do it in angle mode or horizon mode. Always do it in manual mode, and uh, you'll have a more accurate setup. Okay, let's have a look in the manual here, the user guide for the Zod Drift, and it will tell you in here what throw rates you should have. We want 10 millimeters for the elevator and eight millimeters for the ailerons. All right, so that, um, it's measuring about eight to nine mil, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. So any, any minor adjustments can be made once everything's in the plane. Um, we can adjust it all through INAV anyway, so. It's not that you need to be totally accurate here, but you wanna be somewhere in the ballpark or else you'll find you'll be taking off your control horns. And in a plane like this, Everything's so tight. You don't want to be doing that You want to limit that so try and get your central center throws as accurate as possible What we'll do is try and feed all our wiring up through here The cable for the HD camera, which I'm going to have in there waiting We're going to have to feed up our receiver. So I've taken the aerial off that that's going to have to also go up in the battery bay up in this section here so I want to mount that somewhere in here. We've also got our USB extender. I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to put that. That may also have to go up in the fuse, the end of the fuse here. Um, I do have some room still up in here underneath the GPS. So maybe we'll go that way. All right, let's see what we can do. Squeezing all this in. I'll come back when I've got it done and let you know how it went. So we're almost towards the end of this build before we, we decide to maiden it. 
Yeah, you might have noticed I had my aerial going up in here, stupid me, not realizing that's the spot for the screw to hold the wings together. Because I drilled it out, I've had to put another screw in. So they're all tightened back up again and all good. I've mounted the aerial here. So our GPS, that snugly goes in there. I've got a spot there I wasted. I mean, that would have been probably better for the receiver. This is where the fun was. Now, don't recommend this if you have got no patience, because this is really tight. It fits, but it's really tight. Everything's squashed in here. The only concern I've got is wires getting in the way of this servo. I haven't glued this down yet, make it solid. Just want to confirm that our uh, servo horn is not going to be trapped by any wires. There's not a lot of room there at all. But yeah, good build, simple build, but not for those that are that like fiddly small spaces to deal with because it is it is a challenge, but it's doable. What I haven't checked is to see what the CG is like with the battery in there. So we check our CG. Uh, so CG just sitting at that is nose heavy. Well, what I might have to do is add a bit of weight to the back of it, maybe, because it's considerably nose heavy. Somewhere in that in that spot there, it's going to have to go, so it's a long way back. So yeah, that's the, the challenge with this plane is, is room and having things set so you see, geez, good. It's perfect right there where that battery's sitting. So what we'll do now is just check our control surfaces are all moving in the correct direction. Now that I've done the alignment tool on INAV, down on the uh, transmitter, our elevator goes up, elevator goes down, when we push the transmitter pitch up. Now if we bank to the right on the transmitter, left, left aileron goes up, right aileron goes down. That's incorrect. And if we go the other way, that'll be also incorrect. So we've got to swap that around. Elevator's correct, but our ailerons are incorrect. So we need to reverse the opposite one. Got to go back into our outputs tab and what we're going to be doing is i reversed servo three so we want to swap those reverse servo two and then save and reboot put the servo three back to normal save and reboot and we'll double check so we bank to the right on the transmitter left ailerons down right ailerons up that's better and we bank to the left the opposite so we're all correct there now so we'll just stick this in angle mode and we'll just double check our control surfaces in stabilized mode. So we lift the tail up as though the nose is pointing down in you know, a nose dive. You can see the elevator is up. So that's what we want. It's going to be pushing it back down. If we're on an incline, if the nose is pushed up from wind, the elevator is pushing it down to try and correct that to make it stable again. And if we bank it, this aileron goes down, this one here goes up, and the other way here, this aileron here is up, this one is down. And the last thing I want to do is the ESC calibration, and to do that in the outputs tab here, all we have to do is have the, dis the battery disconnected, and we lift the throttle up to full, and then connect the battery up, wait for the beep, lower the throttle back down and calibration will be complete. Just a quick check to make sure the motor still runs correctly and it does and that's basically it. That's about it for the Zod Dart build. Until we do the maiden, this is a uh, made a few little changes since that last scene. What I've done is I've moved the USB extender up into the hatch where the GPS is just to try and get a little bit more weight back towards the tail. It's still nose heavy, so I'm going to have to put some weight on the back here, especially when I get the, the video camera and um, BTX. Uh, it's going to add even more weight, so we definitely need more weight up the back here. Even with the battery pushed fully back in here, it's still nose heavy, so I like to put enough weight up there so I can have a bit of play there with the, the battery. Hopefully it's not too heavy for it on two cell. But other than that, it's a fiddly build. The flight controller, it's packed in there tight. Can't really get anything else in there. 
but there's not a lot of room really even with the BDB F405 wing mini there's not a lot of room so I mean you could I, I decided to put mine underneath here you could squeeze it in probably where up the top here but what I found the thickness of this you would have to change your pin setup you would need right angled pins I would imagine going forward and then yeah cable going underneath there is other ways to do it this is probably not the best way to do it maybe the way I've done it but anyway that's how I've done it it works everything's set up now in iNav oh and that I think we're pretty right our props spinning the right way we've tested that uh, the self-leveling is working correctly we've tested that so I guess until the next video guys it'll be amazing until then guys happy flying Keep with it and yeah, just remember you can do the hobby indoors and outdoors and from here it's all indoors at the moment because of our weather. But we'll get outdoors eventually. Stay safe guys and keep flying, happy flying. See you next time. Bye.